Okay, we're going to start a new chapter, and this chapter is about structures. Everything that we have been learning up to this point um, is going to be applied for this chapter, trying to analyze a structure, which is a system of forces, of rigid components. So, if you notice, at this point we're going to have some type of restriction where we have our forces um, fixed. So if it, you can have a ruler or you can have a fixed point. Here you're going to have another fixed point. And the same thing on this side of the mountain. Internally, you have rigid components where each point is going to have some type of, of forces. So let's look into detail what we mean. So let's look at these three examples. For the bridge, each element, is, this is a rigid element, so first of all it needs to be designed to hold a certain amount of weight per element. And then when you put them together by welding or bolting or some type of assembly, each element is going to have is going to be assembled in a way that a bolt has components in x and y and here you have components say this is point a and this is point b x and y a bolt here a bolt here and there are going to be more elements so each element is going to have its own tension or compression, depending on what's going on with the bridge, could be stretching or compressing. And then, of course, you're going to have a force in X and a force in Y for each point. Here, the complicated part is that you're going to have a bunch of these together. So sometimes, if there are a few members, a few uh, elements, you can do it by hand, but when you have a lot of them, you use a computer or some type of uh, software. This example, you have a bike, and it's the same concept. You have elements, in this case, this is their welded. And the welded together, and each of these components will be carrying a force throughout its um, structure. So we saw something like this before. You have a force here. And a force here, and then probably a force for somebody who's riding a bike. You can even find the centroid of the bike and then apply the force there. Um, so here you're going to be able to find from a macro scale the forces at this point one and at this point two. But if you want to internally find what's the force for each structure, you're going to have to come and do each member by itself. So this first element, where you have the tire, is going to have element 1, element 2, and element 3. And we have a force because of the tire up to 1. And then we are able to break the forces of each element and find them um, as such. For a machine, you have something similar. You have a weight or some type of force that they're carrying. You have elements that are supporting some type of force. A force right there. A force right here. So we'll look at two, into these type of examples um, throughout this chapter. So the first point is to find forces to keep the system in equilibrium. We already know how to do that. This is through the force body, the free body diagram to find forces. Uh, in this case, for instance, it's pretty simple. We have a fixed point. So we have reactions in X and Y for the forces. The weight is given, so we can attach that tension 
and that weight going down the negative f w um, this member right here is going to have a force as well depending on what's going on it's going to be in tension or compression and we saw that the cable will have a tension always so a free body diagram will be like this but forces within the structure will be like so you break the forces apart and by breaking it there's a force here there's a force here so this will have a force and that will have a force and this will have a force and that will have a force so middle point forces will have a tension or a compression force like so a b to b why because we can form a triangle later where this right here is going to carry the magnitude of the force so we'll see we'll find strategies to find these um to find the forces because sometimes you if you're not careful you're going to have a bunch of equations with too little variables to solve for or the other way or the other way around you're going to have too many variables to solve for and not enough equations so um this is a type of a structure truss that is very common for bridges and for roofs like for ceilings etc and it's component is just basically a, a rigid rod or a rigid bar a beam where um, they're gonna hold they're gonna be supporting forces so notice that the difference here is that this point is completely fixed okay and this point this is a roller just like this all right so remember that the, the elements can have two states either tension or compression so that's why we assume those single members to be a single force And this is how you build the structure. It's just gonna have a floor, you're gonna have a place to fix them, to assemble them, and you're gonna have some type of uh, connecting elements. Uh, there are a bunch of different types of the structures, and I'm sure you're gonna see them throughout your, when you go on road trips and when you see a, um, bridges and, and buildings, you're gonna see different types of structures where the concept is the same. All of them have rigid elements where you have to find the forces based on their connections. All right, so you're gonna have the reactions and then go solve for the forces internally. Okay, so we have simple elements where they're just three points and three forces, or we can have more complicated elements where you can start building your stress and your forces throughout your geometry. Okay, so this is where we start learning about methods to solve for forces internally. So when they give you a structure, the first thing you want to do is, okay, the whole structure, what forces can we find? So if we have a fixed point and we have a roller and then you have the structure all right and there's a force here maybe we can find the reaction forces just by using momentum or not momentum moment or board or, or system of equations later when you have one two or three of them when you have the external forces defined and, and solved for you and you go and break the elements apart so a point c for instance you have three elements you have element ac cd and ab and that's what we're going to see right here at point a you have three elements as well plus the reaction ay or the reaction because of the fixed point at point D, you're going to have four forces, 
the one from CD, the one from D to B, the one from D to A, plus the external force P. So when you go ahead and solve for it, you're going to find the points of the connection points. The connection points are A, B, C, and D. And the elements are AC, AD, CD, CB, and DB. And this is a permutation. If you have four, if you have four elements and they're only connected in, in a single point, then you can ha you'll have n minus one. So you have four elements. You have you have four points. You're gonna have n plus one, which is five elements. One, two, three, four, and five. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five but you have only four points. All right, so it seems like a lot, but you go step by step and you can find the forces internally, okay? So uh, this is a special case. I think we're ready for an example. Okay, so they're telling us that we have a structure where we have a point A fixed and a point B. Um, and we have a force uh, C. And again, this could be because it's a bunch of cars throughout the, if it's a bridge and there's a bunch of cars and then we're simply finding a single force or whichever is the case, but we're starting from this point. And they're asking us to find the, what's the problem say? Let's see. Problem says to find. So, uh, yeah. The, so, state each member in tension or compression. Okay, so find which elements are in tension or compression. Uh -huh. All right, so we can do that. Let's go ahead and go to. All right, so the first thing we want to do is or uh, free body diagram. Free body diagram. This is step number one. And it should be pretty simple because we have a point A, we have a fixed point, so we have AY and AX. At point B, we have a roller, so we only have BY. And at point C, we have a perpendicular force, so negative 1800 pounds. And this is in Y. Therefore, there's nothing in X, hence summation of forces in X equals zero, then AX equals zero. So this is very simple. In Y, we have we have AY plus BY minus 1800 equals zero. So we have two equations, two unknowns. We need another equation. So if we do a moment here, we'll get rid of well, it doesn't matter where we do the moment because a AX is zero. So if we do the moment here, AX will be simply zero. Um, so we can choose where to do the moment. Let's do moment around A. And remember, counterclockwise is positive. Therefore, summation of moments around A is, at this point, everything is zero. Um, let's do a positive moment first, B times 12, and the units we're going to keep beat, minus, it's going to be a clockwise moment, so uh, it's going to be 1800 times 4 feet, okay? So let's solve for by is equal to 1800 times 4 
divided by 12, 600. So BY is 600 pounds. Force. Then what we can do is use the force at AY, which we don't have yet. So let's solve for it. So we have BY is 600. Therefore, summation of forces in Y equals AY, which is equal to equal zero. One more time, so summation of forces in y equals zero. Then we have a y equals eighteen hundred minus b y, which is the same as eighteen hundred minus six hundred a y equals twelve hundred pounds. Okay, so we have positive twelve hundred here. And negative 1800. So we can find this force F A C. All right, so let's take that element A and C. And that element is basically telling us that now we're going to go internally. So this force is external. So let's go internal with this force. So we have. Let's do this again. So blue is the structure. A, C, red is the force. 1200. And this is the force. Okay, so let's see. We have a force F, which is A Y. Okay, and then the, the element A, A to C, and then we have um, the force that we need to find, which is F A to C, which is the whole force of this element. We want to know if it's compressor, compression or tension, if it's positive or negative. Well, we can do here something. To find the force that is pretty straightforward. We're gonna do we have this dimension here, four, and we have this dimension here, which is three. So this dimension here is basically square root of four squared, sixteen, plus three squared, nine. This is square root of twenty-five, forty-five, so this is five. Okay, then with this triangle right here, we can say that 1200 is a ratio of 3, the same of the ratio of 1200 divided by 3 is the same as the ratio of the force AC divided by 5. And not only that, we can also say that the ratio of 1200 divided by 3 is the same as the ratio of F. Yeah, let's do that first. Yeah, that's the force that we want to find. All right, so um, 1,200 divided by 3 is 400. So 400 times 5 equals 2,000 pound force equal to FAC. So this is a tension force. All right, so if we go here, we have that force that force, by, um, and this force, which is in tension. All right, so we only need this force and this force, which we don't know if it's tension or compression. We'll see. All right, so we can do something similar here. We can do something such as from the point C to the point B, we know that there's a force BY, which 
which is 600 and there is a triangle right here that is 8 let's see what is the dimension of that so this triangle has 8 and 3 yep so this is Three. And this is eight. It doesn't look like the right ratio, which is not important. But I want to just make it clear. All right. So three, eight, y. And then this is the distance between C and B. B and C. Okay, so this is force from B to C. This is the force A and dy, which is positive, equals to 600 pounds. So it's bending up. And we have this triangular shape that we can do the ratio of those two uh, triangles. So, the same way, 600 is, so 600 divided by 8 is the same ratio as oh but we don't quite know what this is what x is okay so we can find x by saying x equals or x squared is 8 squared plus 3 squared x squared equals 64 plus 9 which is equal to 73 x equals square root of 73 equals square root of 73 is 8.54 okay so x equals All right, so BY is to 8 as FBC, F from B to C, is to 8.54. All right, so that number times 600 divided by 8 is 640.8. Right, so... Right, we have 600 divided 8.64, yeah, just to confirm, 8.54 times 600 divided by 8, yeah, 640.5. So, F from B to C is 640. Point five pounds, and just to confirm that we're using the same, the right numbers. By was six hundred. Yeah, right, six hundred feet. So 1800 times 4 divided by 12 is 1600. Six hundred. Okay, so six hundred and forty point five is F B to C. Alright, that's what we got. And now we have to do uh, the point from A to B, which is point A to B is, let's go here, A and B. So we have two options. We either use F A to C 
and f b to c and do a sine of and then have to find the angles here or cut right here and say the force to find that that force to support the system has to be um, a function it has is, is a function of the force that we need for AC or to, to BC. What what I mean is that we already have this right here. And this force from A to B we can use this information right here. What I mean is that if we want to do let's say twelve hundred divided by 3 is equal to F A B divided by 4 okay so this is 400 times 4 is F A B equals 1600 all right so if we go to the book we should be able to find that wait hold on a second what is f a b is 1600 f a b 1600 okay f a c is 12 is 2000 f a c yeah f a c is 2000 f a c is 2000 FAB is 1600 and FBC is 1700. Okay, so that is what we are missing here. So we cannot use BY, although we should have been able to use BY. But what they're doing is that they're going internally using the forces here. Right, what they do the the point that they're trying to make is that to find C to B we have to use this force F B to A. So in other words, let me write it down again. What they're trying to tell us is that we have the force internally we have the force f b a to b and a to b is greater than b y therefore we have to support a larger amount of force hence we have to use this force so f a b this is the point a um, and then we have the point C and the point B. Okay, so we did find this dimension right here. So this is 3, this is 8, and this is 8.53 or 54. All right, so let's do this again. So we're trying to find FCD. Okay, so FCD is to 8.54 as FAB is to 8. Right, and F A to B is 1600. So that's what says that 1600 divided by 8 times 8.54 is equal to F A to B. All right, so 1600 divided by 8. 1600 divided by 8 times 8.54. 1708. All right, and the book says 1709. Good. 
Okay, so in that example, we were able to find that in order to find, oh, first of all, all the forces are in tension. Okay, so F A to B equals 17.8 pound force. This is 600, this is 1200. And BC was, we found that, didn't we? BC, or well, CD, sorry. Ah, I call this CD, but this is CD. AC is 2000, and here for this problem we're using 1600, which is BC. So this is B, oh, CB, yeah, BC. CB is the same as BC, okay. Um, and this is 1600. Okay, so we got it. 12, uh, this one is zero. This one is AX is zero. All right, so 1200 AY, AB is 1710 basically. AC is 200, right? AC, we computed AC somewhere over here. Yeah, AC is right here. AC is 2000, sorry. AC is 2000. And C to B is 1600. So the larger force is the component A to C. And that makes sense because C is closer to A and A is fixed.